My name is, uh, I'm Kirk Haynes. Um, I am the Chief Probation Officer for Fresno County. Um, I've been Chief for about three and a half years now, going on four years, been with the Probation Department, Fresno County Probation, for uh, about 27 years. You know, what I think one important aspect of this is addressing the stigma. You know, I um, grew up in, uh, in Southwest Fresno and probably shared uh, experience of many of us who, who grew up in, in, in that environment is that, um, you know, when people look at mental health and mental wellness and looking at, you know, whether you had a, a diagnosis or anything like that, people would see that as, uh, as a weakness. And, uh, and I even think about my own parents and how my mom back in the day when um, many of our, you know, some of my uh, kids that I went to school with, schools would label a lot of our black children with ADHD um, because they really didn't understand, you know, some of the things that those youth, those young people were going through. And so the schools would overdiagnose and um, psychologists would overdiagnose our young uh, black, especially boys with ADHD. And so my mom would talk about that a lot. And so I'm thinking, you know, as, you know, we, raising young children, young black children um, through these times, I think a lot of our parents and in, in a lot of times that's, passed on to many of us as parents as looking at if you're being, if, if you have some kind of a mental illness or if you exhibit symptoms, then it's something that we should address, you know, within the family, um, not necessarily go outside the family to be doing those kind of things. So I think it's important for us as a Black community to normalize what does that look like. If, if we need help, if our young people need help, if adults need, need that kind of help, to not shy away from it. When we think about how we normalize it is we talk and have open discussions about what does that look like for our families and for our young, for young people and for adults as well. Um, but then um, don't put the shame that's, a, that's been historically associated with um, someone who is struggling with that. This is a big topic of discussion amongst the leadership in the, in the county, whether it be the sheriff, um, uh, police departments, chiefs that I work with, and other um, partners that we have in law enforcement. Um, you know, we have uh, officers and, and staff who work in our department who um, who struggle with uh, with mental, mental illness from time to time. And many times it's, you know, short term kind of things that we can help to manage here through our uh, employment, uh, employment, employment wellness programs that we that we offer here. Um, but um, the first thing that we try to promote here um, in my department, and I think a, across what we've seen as best practices, is to have a, a life-work balance. You, a, lot, a lot of people talk about a work-life balance, but I think of it as a life-work balance, I think, because life comes first, right? You have to be able to live the kind of life that supports the hard work, the important work we do in law enforcement. Um, you know, we have a probation officers who work in the service areas, but we also have correctional officers who work within our institutions, both in the adult and on the juvenile side. And so it's important that we have a balance about putting the work in its proper place. It's really important work that we do. There's no doubt about that. I think about probation officers and the, and the tasks that they have, whether they're working in adult or in juvenile, um, they have a lot of authority over the lives of, of, uh, of individuals that we, that we care for both uh, adults and for, for youth and their families. And so we have an important job, but I always, always remind staff to keep the job in this proper perspective, right? It's a, a means to be able to, um, to take care of your family, to be able to take care of your individual needs, um, but the, the job shouldn't divide, define who you are. And, uh, and so understanding what that balance means and what that looks like, I think it goes that very first step in, in the work that we do in law enforcement. I think the other thing that we try to impress upon officers and staff is to understanding trauma, right? Understanding how trauma impacts you as an officer, how it impacts the people that we serve, um, whether they be out um, those out in the community or those that we, we serve within our institutional environments. Um, understanding uh, uh, adverse childhood experiences, understanding what do those mean as we carry those into adulthood. And, uh, and not just of our clients, but also the things that we carry with us as officers, because oftentimes what happens with this, these traumatic, traumatic experiences is 
um, they manifest themselves in different ways, right? And they're all, they're not always positive ways how they get manifest. Sometimes it's through use of force events. It could just be conflicts that we have with, with one another. Um, but what we want to do is to make sure that we provide training and we provide an insight so that our staff understand how do we deal with the trauma that we have and the trauma that we presented with when we when we deal with people out in, in the community. The other thing I, I try to make people understand is that um, if they need help, if people are struggling, if people really are experiencing some things that they need to get help for is to talk to someone is to have a confidant, to have someone, and it doesn't always necessarily have to be your boss, um, but to be able to have someone that they can talk to about some of their issues that they're, that they're experiencing. Because what we don't want is for people to carry those things around and have substance abuse issues or issues of violence or domestic violence, you know, these kinds of things that can manifest themselves if they don't seek out the help that they really need. So when I think about wellness and what you can do, um, reach out, communicate with people, communicate with professionals. If you don't feel like you can communicate with a friend or family, there are a lot of people, a lot of resources out there that we want folks to take advantage of. There, there are times when the job can be overwhelming and can be stressing. So one of the things that I do is I try to stay fit, try to exercise regularly. I try to, to, to walk or to, or to run, really just try to keep my um, physical um, being, well-being intact. And as well as my mental, you know, try to read, try to be involved in, uh, in, in, in outside, you know, kinds of hobbies and activities. I think it's important uh, for people to have um, outlets, you know, things that are outside of the, of the work environment. Um, like I said, this, you know, some of the jobs that we do are really important, but, um, but to be able to, to understand um, how can you try to make the, um, your, your own personal life, one that promotes uh, a well-being. And, and I think, again, exercise and being fit are, is one of them. Managing stress is another thing that I think is important that, you know, some of the things that I try to do myself. Um, and, and that's tough when, when we're dealing, no matter what level of the organization you might be in, or no matter where you are in your community, or you know, a mom at home, or if you're a, a dad who's, you know, out there, you know, doing the work, or if you're a student going to school, stress is, going to be always around and understanding how to manage that. Uh, you know, one of the things I, I try to do is compartmentalize things, right? You can only take one thing, try to handle one thing at a time and not let the, you know, all of the different cares, all of the different things that are going on in the world to overwhelm you. Try to take care of one of those things, one thing at a time, one day at a time, one thing at a time. And when you're doing that, be mindful of those activities, right? They, we talk a lot about mindfulness and, and being, you know, totally aware of your, um, your, your well-being, what your mind feels like, what your body feels like. Um, and so when you're taking on these tasks, whatever they are, one thing at a time, um, really immerse yourself in those things, even in the comfort things that you do, the things that you enjoy. Um, be mindful, take in those experiences, really um, try to savor those things for really why you enjoy them or why you're doing the kind of work that you're doing. Um, be very um, uh, mindful of those things as you're, as you're experiencing. Having a, a, a relationship, a spiritual relationship, I'm a Christian. Um, you know, I believe, you know, my Lord Jesus Christ is the reason why, you know, I am where I am. Having that power in my life um, has been inc an incredible um, way that I've been able to manage the many things that, um, that I do. And, and for us to be able to acknowledge that and to recognize that in our lives, um, you know, there's no other way for, for me to be able to get through that. Most important things is probably the last thing I'll talk about is getting rest, is getting quality sleep, taking time to decompress, take time for yourself um, in quality ways, right? Um, and so oftentimes that may mean that you may have to schedule that kind of time out, right, in order to take a vacation, to be able to, to just decompress and to get away from um, the cares of the work and, and that kind of thing. And then when you do lay your head down to sleep, you know, do the best you can that you can make the environment where you are sleeping one that is uh, conducive to making sure that you're getting quality rest, making sure you get enough sleep and that kind of thing. As I've gotten older, I don't need as much sleep as I used to, but still, um, the sleep that I do get, I try to make sure that I focus on making sure that it's quality sleep.